Holy shit, it's real. Okay, uh, tell me when you see it. There. That cloud doesn't move. It's big. And it's required to be a plane. Hey guys, what's happening? Today we'll be exploring Nope, the 2022 sci-fi horror film written and directed by Jordan Peele, starring Keith David, Daniel Kaluuya, Kiki Palmer, Stephen Yoon, Michael Wincott, and Brandon Pereira. It revolves around two siblings struggling to maintain their family's ranch and legacy following the unexpected death of their father under mysterious circumstances. The pair becomes convinced that there's a UFO above and enact a plan to capture the evidence. In this video, we're going to explore the film's themes, ending, and the alien creature that terrorizes the nearby lands. The film opens on the soundstage of a fictional 90s sitcom, Goldie's Home. While we're not given much context, the titular chimpanzee, Gordy, is covered in blood and appears distressed. We then head to the present day, where we meet ranch owner Otis Haywood Sr. and his son, Otis Jr., who run Haywood's Hollywood Horse Ranch. Haywood is a marvelous horse whisperer that trains and handles them for film and television productions. The family also claims that the unnamed jockey in Plate 626 from Edward Maybridge's Animal Locomotion series of photographs was their ancestor and that the business has been run by the family for generations. As O.J. brings some equipment in, his father, who's training their temperamental horse ghost, tells him that they should keep their heads out of the clouds. He also asks where O.J.'s sister was, saying that Emerald should be helping them on the farm. After reassuring his son that they should just keep working hard and that everything will be okay, they both hear the sound of screaming from above. Haywood then looks up to the sky as the area begins to rain down inanimate objects. Unfortunately, a coin hits him in the eye, ultimately killing him. His horse, Ghost, is also found with a set of keys impaled into its skin, and the entire event is written off by the locals as a freak incident involving junk falling from a plane. But his children, especially OJ, are not so convinced. Regardless, they try to keep the business afloat and maintain the family legacy. OJ had worked very closely with his father and developed a deep understanding and compassion for the animals under their care, in contrast to his older, more serious, and more reserved sister. We see the conflict between OJ and his siblings, Emerald and Emma, and how they are dealing with the financial problems of their family ranch. OJ is committed to the family legacy and wants to keep the ranch running, but his siblings have their own aspirations and are not interested in continuing with the ranch. The story introduces Ricky Dupe, a washed-up former child star, who runs a self-exploitative theme park called Jupiter's Claim. Ricky was one of the two survivors of a chimpanzee attack witnessed at the start of the story, which has caused him deep psychological trauma. OJ sells ten of their horses to Ricky, with the intention of buying them back when they have the money, but Ricky also offers to buy the horse, unhappy about the idea of destroying their family legacy for some quick cash. The pair are polar opposites, but with some communication and a shared goal, the siblings will find that they can do anything they set their mind to. 
As they reminisce about their dad over some drinks, Emerald points to a photo of him with a horse named Jean Jacket. It's here that we realize the root of their resentment, Em was supposed to train Jean. On her ninth birthday, she received a jacket, but the responsibility was given to her older brother. Her father was under a lot of pressure during the Scorpion King's shoot. Although they ended up using camels in the film instead, it ultimately made her feel as though she didn't belong. When the pair spotted their father's horse Ghost outside, OJ went out to investigate. He approached Ghost, but the sound of screaming from above scared the horse away again. As OJ followed where it went, he was treated to a weird light spectacle and more sounds of screaming above that caused him to drive back. With the siblings going over the footage on their security camera and noticing a blackout, OJ asked her if she believed in a bad miracle, which was essentially the explanation everyone had given them about their father's strange death. He revealed the horse vanished, and the thing he saw was huge. He also told her it was too fast and silent to be a plane, and realizing they might be able to make some serious money if they could record proof, they recruited Angel Torres to set up surveillance cameras and help them capture the OPR shot they required. Luckily for them, Angel was a UFO enthusiast with a number of wild theories. While setting up the equipment, he told OJ that the aliens could be intergalactic travelers looking for peace, futuristic humans coming back in time to stop us from ruining everything, all world killers, planetary destroyers that have been watching us, waiting to beam us up and make a move. After setting everything up, the enthusiastic angel leaves, and that very evening, the siblings are pranked by Jup's three boys dressed up as aliens. Right after this, OJ finds Ghost outside again and tries to bring him back to the stable. Once again, as they get near the house, something spooks the horse away. When OJ looks up, he sees a tornado of sand being swallowed up into a cloud. Obsessed with the investigation, Angel calls them to let them know that one of the cameras was out due to electrical interference and that the other one had a praying mantis in front of it, preventing them from getting clear footage. As both OJ and M then catch sight of the moving cloud, his sister yells at him to run to shelter. The UFO then scours the skies menacingly before returning to the clouds. We then cut to the past with OJ and his father. Hayward tells him that Ghost is acting territorial and states that some animals ain't fit to be trained. Waking OJ up from his dream, he realizes they were not prepared for this mission. The siblings call Atlas Holst, the renowned cinematographer from their previous shoot, offering him the project of a lifetime, the opportunity to capture the impossible shot. When Angel comes back to the farm the next day, he looks up and tells them he noticed a nearby cloud that never moved, leading them to speculate that is where the UFO is hiding. What they soon discover is that rather than being a spacecraft controlled by aliens, the UFO is actually a giant aerial creature nicknamed Gene. It appears as a classic flying saucer that pulls up its prey. It has essentially chosen the Hayward Ranch as its territory, stationing itself in one spot over a hill and obscuring its shape and color to look like a cloud. Interestingly, Gene appears to be inspired by the Lovecraftian monster race known as the Flying Polyps, which first appeared in H.P. Lovecraft's The Shadow Out of Time, published in 1936. The Flying Polyps are creatures from outer space described as aggressive and predatory, much like Gene. They are flying monsters that become invisible whenever they want. They're capable of manipulating wind and weather, existing only in isolated parts of the world from the Australian outback to the Mojave Desert. They can be noticed by the horrible whistling and screaming sounds they make as they pass by and are fluid in form, able to change and distort in shape and size. The flying polyps also attack people by using vortices of wind to suck them up into the sky, functioning with some degree of non-Euclidean geometry. The kicker, they really, really hate to be noticed and become violently aggressive towards anyone that perceives them. Having said that, I'm not entirely convinced that Gene is an alien but rather a creature native to Earth. Kelsey Rutledge, the scientific consultant that advised Pylon Decrease's design and behavior, named it Ocular Nimbus Adequates. Kelsey explained that Jordan wanted to make something that was unique but still in the realm of scientific possibility, so they used the weird attributes of marine animals from the square iris of octopus, the ability of cuttlefish to mesmerize prey through a form of hypnosis. They added chromatophores of cephalopods, essentially color-changing pigment cells that enable them to camouflage against any surface. They also included the geometry of a crazy creature called a giant livation as well as the ability of bluefin tuna to expand and retract their fin, all of which are elements seen in gene throughout its various forms. After eating some hikers, the UAP essentially regurgitated their inorganic remains, including the coins and keys that rained down on the family at the very beginning. OJ eventually deduces it as a predatory territorial creature that eats anything that looks directly at it. 
We as the audience observe that it moves through some form of electrostatic lift organs and tissue that enable ionic propulsion fills to generate air currents. But what the group doesn't realize is that during the six months it has been here, Dupe has been feeding it horses regularly. He's been exploiting both the horses and the UAP to maintain the same admiration of an audience that he received as a child star. It's clear the horrific incident with Gordy has fractured his mind. The theme park is not just about Kid Sheriff, but there's also a secret back room dedicated to Gordy's home filled with rare memorabilia from the show. Falsely believing that he survived the Gordy incident because they shared a special bond, Jupiter has convinced himself that a similar kinship now exists with Jean Jacket. When watching Gordy move about the wrecked set, Park noticed one of his co-star shoes inexplicably standing upright. The standing shoe, which he now keeps on display, is an example of a bad miracle and the impossible shot the Haywoods discussed throughout. Park's misplaced belief that he had a special bond with Gordy and Jean Jacket. 1018. Contrasted with the life experience of OJ, who grew up taming unruly animals with his father, OJ's experience has informed him to respect animals with the knowledge that they can either kill you or work with you depending on your competency. This sets Ricky up to make the fatal mistake of underestimating a creature that's too dangerous to wrangle. Looking directly in the eyes of some animals is a sign of dominance, which means that the family were attacked because they were trying to stand up to Gordy. Ricky thought he was saved because of his friendship to the chimp, when in reality, he survived because his gaze was fixed on the upstanding shoe when Gordy went on his rampage. Gordy then interpreted Ricky not looking directly into his eyes as a sign of submission, which is why it didn't attack him. Misled by this bad miracle, he began feeding horses to Jean, which is why it made this area's home. Worse still, he now plans on introducing his live audience to the creature, using one of the horses as bait. Of course, this ends in disaster. Not realizing looking directly at Jean was a sign of aggression, the entire audience, including Ricky, stared at the entity and was sucked up into the belly of the beast before being devoured slowly. This meant the cacophony of screams we'd been hearing from above throughout the film were people and. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it if you could take a moment to hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up.